Good morning and welcome to Our City Online. My name is Kellen and whether you're tuning in from Southern California or you're watching from across the world, we'd love to get to know you a little bit better. And the best way to do that is through our connection card. So go ahead and follow this link to fill out the connection card so we can keep you updated on what's coming up and how you can be involved from wherever you are. Well, before we get started, I wanted to remind you that here at Our City Church, we are all about generosity. And we talk about it every week, not because we want something from you, but because we want something for you. We believe that God was first generous to us. And so we want to follow his example and be generous to others. When you give here, you make it possible for us to create these online services, produce our in-person services that are happening right now at our Corona location, and do incredible things like serve our city, give to people in need, and support incredible causes all around the world. So thank you. There's a few ways to do that around here. You can give by heading to the link below to give online, or you can text the dollar amount you would like to give to the number 84321, or you can sign up to give through our app. Whichever way you decide to give, make sure you select the drop down Our City Online so that we know which location you're giving from. We're gonna jump into some worship right now, but before we do that, if you would like to enjoy an extended time of worship this week, we have a playlist on our homepage of our YouTube channel called Our City Church Worship with a curated list of songs. So anytime you can head on over to that playlist for an awesome time of worship. All right, if you don't have that chat open, open that up because we would love to chat with you during service and make sure you grab a Bible and something to take notes with and enjoy the service. Jesus, the only one who could ever say 
City Online. I have some very exciting news for you. You may not know this about yourself. You may not know you're a part of a community. You're a part of a tribe called Our City Online. And as our lives are getting back to normal, um, and as we've talked about in the last few messages, we want to keep some of the new normals that we've come to love here at Our City Online and go back to some of the other normals that we love too in our community here at Our City. Uh, before COVID, we were only one location. We were one place. We had the Our City Corona location. And then COVID took away that location because we met at a school and we couldn't meet there anymore. And we kind of merged into Our City Corona and we became Our City Online. And that's where a lot of you came to meet us and we were able to meet many of you. And guess what? We don't ever want to do church without you again. But here's what's happening. Our Our City Corona location, which used to be kind of merged in with the Our City Online, is going back to being Corona. So we have to start getting good at talking to the two locations, you here at Our City Online, as well as the Our City Corona. And we're learning how to do that. We're figuring out how to do that. But here's what I do want to tell you, is we are going to put our financial resources, we are going to put our human resources towards making sure that we're building specific ministry to you, our second location, Our City Online online. Okay, so with that said, we're going to go back to some of the previous Our City Church best practices from when we used to just be the one location in person in Corona. And this includes the philosophy of one of the four Our City Church values. And the first one is that we're all about Jesus. This means a few different things. One of the things it means is that we are for what Jesus was about. We're not going to talk a lot about what we're against. We want to be known about what we're for, what Jesus was for. We want you to hear from Our City Church. Here's what we're for. Here's who we're about, not who we're not about and who we're against, okay? It also means for us that we're going to be all about preaching about Jesus, okay, in his ways, his life, his, 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 his uh, ideas, his rules the, of, of wisdom, everything that he was about. But we're going to be about preaching about Jesus and not be a church uh, that is about who is doing the preaching. And even though as lead pastor, I'm always going to do the large share of the preaching here at our city, we are very blessed to have very gifted communicators that are on our teaching team. During COVID, I did most of that uh, because there wasn't anywhere to go. There wasn't any other things to do. And I, I wanted to make sure I stabilized our church. But it isn't healthy. It's not sustainable long term to go every single week without breaks for me. And it's not healthy for us as a church to only ever hear from one person when we have so many great communicators in our church. So, um, and not just in our church, but in our relationship, in the kingdom of God. We have people outside of our immediate community that we have relationships with. And we want you to hear what God is speaking to them them and also through them. So today, 
I want you to get to hear from one of our gifted communicators here at our city. I want you to open your heart. I want you to lean in, and I want you to be challenged, again, by one of our best. Uh, you may never have heard from him before, uh, but I promise you today, you are going to be really encouraged. You're going to be challenged, and you're going to be better from what God is going to share through him. And with that said, it is my sincere privilege to introduce to you Charlotte's dad, Pastor Jesse Kretzu. Welcome, everybody. Whether you're watching from Our City Corona or Our City Online, I am so excited to be with you today. If we haven't met yet, my name is Jesse, and I'm one of the pastors here at Our City Church. I want to go ahead and invite you to open up your Bible to Luke chapter 17. Uh, and I want to invite you a little bit into my own personal life. It's, it's been a little while since we talked last, and I've had a cataclysmic event happen in my own life. It happened on May 26th. 2021, that's the day that I got to hold my newborn baby girl for the very first time. And let me tell you, it was amazing, but honestly, I realized that going from single to dating, like that was a big change in my life. Uh, going from dating to engaged, that was definitely a change. Uh, engaged to married, that was such a big change. And married to parenting, that is life altering forever different big time change. And this last week's of having Charlotte at home with us, it's been so special. And for a while, we were just operating in triage mode. Anybody who's a parent out there, you know what it is. It's handling poopy diaper after poopy diaper, sleepless nights, the crazy cries. You're trying to interpret what she's talking about, what the deal is. You got to handle one thing at a time. And Bridget and I, we've been trying really hard. We wanted to get back to some sort of a routine or a rhythm in life. We wanted to somehow get back to normal in some sense, but we realized that in so many ways, we'll never be able to go back to normal. We'll never be able to go back to how things were. And honestly, now, like getting to hold Charlotte, in so many ways, I would never want to go back to how things were before I got to meet her. And Bridget and I, I know that we aren't the only ones to experience this type of cataclysmic, life-altering event. Honestly, anyone else who has had children, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, anybody who started their own business, if you've gone off to college, uh, some life-changing events are a little bit more heartbreaking. So honestly, anybody who, if you've lost a family pet, uh, maybe you've lost a job, maybe you've had to bury a loved one. Uh, more collectively as a community, we've gone through some crazy life-changing events. Anybody who's gone through a war or a terrorist attack, or most recently with the COVID-19 pandemic, these things, they change us forever. In many ways, after these events, we do get a chance to go back to normal, but how do we know which ways we should go back to, and how do we know which ways we should never go back to? Fortunately for us, God knew that we would face these things, and there is wisdom that God has given us to navigate situations just like this today. There's an incredible story in the Bible recorded in Luke about how Jesus helped a group of people navigate getting back to normal. He helped him figure out what things should change and what ones, honestly, they should stay the same. And so let's take a look at this story. Everybody go ahead and type in the chat right now, there and then, or uh, th those of you are city online, go ahead and drop one of those dynamite emojis. We're going to get into it. You guys know that we always preach from the perspective of understanding the there and then of the Bible so that we can apply it those principles that we're learning in the here and now of today. So today, there's so much to be found in the story that we're going to tackle it verse by verse. We're going to start in Luke chapter 17. Uh, I want to catch you up to speed real quick on what's been going on. Jesus is traveling from Galilee to Jerusalem. On the journey, Luke records about how Jesus has taken time with many different groups of people. He's teaching uh, all sorts of different parables. He's healing people. He's praying. He's demonstrating God's love. And we're going to catch up in verse 11. It says this, Now on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. Jesus left Galilee for the last time, and when it says he's on his way to Jerusalem, Jesus knows that he's heading to his own death on the cross. Everyone has a Jerusalem we have to go to. How much longer will you avoid it? How much longer will you pretend it's not there? We're only one verse in, and already there's an in invitation for you and me to get back on our way to our own Jerusalem, to take those last few classes and graduate, to repair that relationship, to start your business, to set an appointment with the counselor, to start, to stop, to give up, to commit to. The invitation is there for you to go to Jerusalem. Verse 12. 
As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance, and they called out in a loud voice, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. If you had leprosy back then, there was no hiding your issue. Your family knows it, your community knows it, your employer knows it. You had to move out of your home and into a whole different community with other lepers outside of the city walls. These lepers are keenly aware of their need for help. They've obviously heard of Jesus and his ability to transform impossible situations to help things go back to normal, and they want to part. If the leper in that day was a 2021 Christian, though, let me tell you, this story, it would look so different. We tend to toy with our own need of Jesus and project it as though everyone around us actually needs Jesus, not us. We don't need Jesus, it's them. We say things like, Jesus, what I need you to do is make sure my boss deals with, uh, make sure my coach gets over, make sure my spouse would learn to. What I need for you to do, Jesus, is to fix them. Let me tell you, you won't ever ask God to have pity on you if you don't think that you're sick. But a leper knows the thing that keeps them in isolation, that hinders their success, that limits their relationships, it's not everyone else's issue around them. It's their issue. It's their sickness. And they need the help. Verse 14. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. And as they went, they were cleansed. So often today, our expectation is to be healed first, and then we'll obey Jesus. How many times have we prayed that terrified prayer in our lives? God, if you'll only fix the situation for me, I'll never do it again. If you'll do this, then I'll do that. But I want to ask you today, church, are you willing to obey before you know that you're going to get healed? These lepers weren't healed until after they had already obeyed. Our faith can't be a transactional experience. It's not this for that. It's faith. It's belief before results. Now, why does Jesus tell them to go show themselves to the priests? Well, there and then, because he was not only trying to heal them, but he was trying to help them get back into community. It was part of the Levitical law. You can read it in Leviticus 13. It says that the only way to return to their life was if the priest looked at them and stated that they were now clean. What was unclean has become clean. So when Jesus heals these lepers, he doesn't just heal their skin, but he actually restores them back into community, back into their life. Jesus can heal your sickness, but he wants even more to heal your life. He's not just doing work on the outside, but he's cleansing the inside as well. Now, these former lepers, they actually have the opportunity to make friends who are not lepers. You, watching online right now, you can have friends who care about their faith, who care about their health. You can have friends who are sober. You can now have friends who don't gossip, who don't hate, who aren't bitter. When Jesus heals you, you aren't restricted to your old group of lepers, but you can make brand new, healthy friends. I love that it says, as they went, they were cleansed. We should always see ourselves as lepers on the way to our healing. We are always in process, in restoration. We are always on the journey of being sanctified, of being made whole, of healing. The day we stop going on the way forward, that's the day when we are on the way back to our leper community. As a new dad, reading kids' books all the time now, and they all have nursery rhymes, and the way that they orchestrate things is so funny to me. I wanted to get away with saying it this way, that being on the way, it keeps your leprosy at bay. But we decided not to include that in today's sermon. It's a little bit too cheesy for us, so we're not going to say that. So let's go to verse 15. Here we go. One of them, when he saw he was healed, he came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. The implications of this verse is that in the group of 10 people, nine are Hebrews and one is a Samaritan. A Samaritan, the outsider, the hated, the one who was put on the outside by the religious insiders. I want to ask you today, church, is there a place in your heart for Jesus to heal people that are foreign to you, that are disliked by you, that are abrasive to you? Is there a place in your heart for Jesus to heal the people outside of your comfort zone? 
Let's go to verse 17. Jesus asked, we're, we're not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Verse 19, then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Church, can I preach to you for just a second right now? Jesus says this person's faith has made him well. Faith alone, I want to tell you, faith alone does not make you well. You can put your faith in all kinds of things that won't really make you well. You can put your faith in stars, faith in your own strength, faith in crystals. You can put faith in your own smarts and ingenuity. You can put faith in positivity and karma. Faith in those things, though, that won't make you well. It's faith in Jesus that makes us well. Faith in the one who has sacrificed himself for you. Faith in the one who has conquered death for you. That's the faith that has made this leper well. And that's the faith that's available to us today as well. In the group of 10, only one, only the outsider, the Samaritan, was filled with enough gratitude to return to Jesus and say thank you. I want to ask you this. When is the last time you returned to Jesus after your miracle, after your answered prayer, after your provision, and you returned and said, thank you? So many times we just start asking for things again without actually being thankful for what we just got. God has brought us all through this insane time and this pandemic, and so much has changed. We've lost some things. We've lost jobs. We've lost relationships. We've lost loved ones. Our job has changed. Our school has changed. The way we gather and celebrate, it's all changed. Things are different. But we are on our way back to normal, right? So let me ask you, will you be like the nine who just kept on moving with life? Or will you take the time? Will you be like the one who recognized the gravity of what Jesus had done in their life? And will you return to say thank you? As you get back to normal, will you take this once-in-a-lifetime chance to consider which ways we should go back to and which ways we should never go back to? I'm going to say some very honest and straightforward things to you right now, church, and I want to be honest with you because I love you. I want more for you. I want you to experience the life-changing power of Jesus as I've experienced him, his love, his acceptance, his compassion in my own life. So I want to ask you these questions. Will you stop binging on food and Netflix and shopping to cope with your emotions? Will you start seeing that counselor you've been thinking about? Will you stop living in isolation? And will you start exercising again? Will you stop picking fights on social media platforms that lead to nothing? Will you start prioritizing the time that you found with your loved ones? Today, I want you to pause and I want you to open up the notes app on your phone or a computer or grab a pen and paper for old time's sake and make some lists. I want you to make a list and ask these questions. What things were better for you before March of 2020? What things are better for you now? What do you want to stop doing? Maybe what do you want to start doing? Our city church, if you'll take the time and you'll answer those questions. Could you imagine if everybody in your circle of influence and of friends and of family, if they would pause and take the time to make those lists? For many of us, getting back to normal, it's actually gonna be getting back to worse. But for us, listening today, if we will learn and apply these truths given by God to us, getting back to normal can actually be getting back to better. If we would live like the one leper and be filled with gratitude, if we would share with others how Jesus has healed us as we were on the way, the leper would have said it this way, hey, none of this was by my own doing, but it was by my faith in Jesus that made me well. It wasn't the priest. He doesn't get credit for this. I showed up and the priest confirmed I was already healed. It was Jesus who healed me as I was on the way. Listen, church, when we all decide to go out and do this, we actually begin to experience the life that Christ wants for us. We begin to give it away to the others around us. We invite others into that community, into that belief, into that lifestyle here at our city church. This next season of church is so critical because people need 
our Jesus more than ever before. So right now, I, I want to pray for you, church. I want to pray for me. I want to pray for everybody in our community. And I believe in the power of prayer. And right now, I'm going to walk us through a guided prayer. And I'll say it. You can repeat it after me. Uh, if you're by yourself, go ahead and say it out loud. If you're around people, maybe just whisper it quietly to yourself. If something really resonates with you, though, I want you to either type it in the chat or write it down so that you can go back and refer to it again and again. But let's go ahead and pray this prayer together. Jesus, I thank you for your love, for your compassion, for your wisdom to navigate this season of getting back to normal. I ask you to help me, help me live better than when all this started. Help me move out of my leper community and into a healthy community. And Jesus, I ask that you would use me to invite other lepers who are just like me into this healthy community and into this relationship with you. Would you use me to introduce my friends and my family to you, Jesus, that they may place their faith in you and that they may be made well by you. I pray these things in your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, hey, Our City family, thank you so much for your time and your attention this morning. I really think that if you'll take just a moment, even right now as we close this out, to journal out these couple questions, or hey, if you're with a group of people, go ahead and turn around, get in a, a circle, and discuss these questions together. I think that you'll get some incredible conversation out of these questions. Again, the questions I want you to discuss are these. What things were better for you before March of 2020, that infamous month when the stay-at-home orders began? What was better for you at that time of life? What things are better for you now? Now that we've lived through a pandemic, we've had to change the way that we work and live and breathe and move and learn and all that, what's better for you? What do you would keep on doing that you've learned how to do? What things do you want to stop doing? What coping mechanisms, what behaviors, what attitudes did you pick up along the last year and a half that's not helpful? And the last question, what do you want to start doing? What are the things that, that now that you've been through this crazy life-changing experience, you've learned a lot, and it would be good if you would begin doing some new things. Go ahead and take some time to journal, to discuss that. Our City Church, it has been such an honor to be with you today. I love you so much. Let's go change the world together.